Hey, welcome everybody. Um, Hello. so thanks for coming on. Um, tonight we're gonna we're gonna start a Helchos Chuva. You know, we're going. I think that the best way to go from Tisha B'av, um, hopefully we all had very meaningful Tisha B'avs, Um, and you know, is to to take the lessons that we learn and and apply it to ourselves. Um, and work work on ourselves. So I think it's appropriate that we don't we don't delay at all. And immediately, right? Yesterday was Tisha B'av, and immediately tonight. We're going to start Hel Um, so we can hopefully um see see the Mashiach soon. Um, the rebuilding of the base make base and make by by us uh improving on ourselves and 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 doing chuva. So uh, we're going to go through the Rambam Hel Chuva. Um, let's uh, and we'll do as much as we can. Um, and uh, so start with the first barak, first halacha. So the Ramam says, Kol mitzvos sheba Torah, bein asei, bein lo tasei, im avar adam al-achas mehen, bein bezadon, bein bishkaga, kishe yaseh tshuva v'yashu mechato, chayav lihisvados lifnei hakel baruchu. So the Ramam says that all mitzvos of the Torah, whether they're a mitzvah asei, positive mitzvah, bein lo tasei, or if they're a uh, negative command, Adam. So if a person transgresses on one of them, whether it was a purpose, or accidental, when he does chuva and he and he repents, he returns from his sin, says the Rambam, you're also obligated to confess. This is what we call Vidoy on Yom Kippur, right? Vidoy where we clap ourselves. Right and say Ashamnu Baganu. So this is the Rambam. This is the Rambam defining that and he's saying it's us admitting our sins. If a man or woman they commit a sin and the Pasuk says and they confess as Khatat as Khata their sin that they committed. The Vidoy Dvarim. This is what we call Vidoy. Vidoy ze mitzvah say. So it says the Rambam that Vidoy is a mitzvah to say. It's a positive mitzvah to to confess on our sins. Ketan mitzvah. Then how do we do vidoy? Omer, you should say Ana Hashem Chatasi Avisi Pashati Lefanecha Vasisi Kach Bekach. So you should say um, Hashem, I sinned. Um, different words for sins. Maybe Ram will get into that. I I did this and this. Vareni chamti uvoshti b'masai liolam ini chozer zavar zeh, and I'm I'm embarrassed from this. I regret it, and I'm not going to do this again. Muzeo ikar shal vidoy, and says Ramam, this is the essential part of the vidoy. V'chol hamar beli his fados umar yachbenyan zeh praise the mishabach, and whoever whoever elaborates and extends his vidoy, so that's a praiseworthy. Praiseworthy thing. The chaim balei chatos v'ashamos beishem avin korbanei korbanuseim al shigigasen al zedonam emis kaper lehem bekorna bekorbanam al shiyasu chuva v'isvadu vidoy dvarim. Um, so says the Rambam. Also, in the times of Beis Hamikdash, don't just think vidoy was a thing that we do now, since we don't have to bring korbanos. Says the Rambam, don't think like that, because even when even when we could bring korbanos, um. They also had to. They also had to do a vidui when they would bring their korban for a chatas for for sinning or an asham. The pasuk says v'hisvada sher chatale v'chein kol mechay v'misus beistin u'mechay v'malkus e miskaper lahem b'misas and obelik yason ad shiyasu chuva v'hisvadu. And says the Rambam also in the times where we had beistin and they would put people to death for certain sins or give people lashes, so they didn't get a full kapara. They didn't get a full uh, repentance. Um, until they did a vidui, they admitted their sin. So, so to someone who damages his friend, or, or damages their money. Even if you, you know, you uh, let's say you hit you hit someone's car. So, okay, so you you pay you pay him. Um, you damage. It costs a thousand bucks. You hand over a thousand dollars for damaging someone's car. So says the Rambam. You you have you don't get repentance until you. Admit you confess to what you did. So that's that's the first halacha. You basically have to do vidoy. The Rambam is going to uh, elaborate a little bit more. First, he says, "Sayer hamishtaleach." So 
this this is a kind of like a little bit of a of a break from Vidoy. Um but he still he still uh he still he puts it in in the in the first parak, so we'll look at it. Sir Mishta Mishta Lefi Shehu Kapara Al Ko Israel, Koin Gadal Misvadalav Alashon Ko Israel. Shinemar Vihisvadalav is called Venus Bene Israel. So the Ramam says that the Sayyir Mishta Leach, the goat that was sent to Azazel, um, that we throw that the coat that they would throw off the cliff. So he says that atones for all of Bene Israel. Um and he brings the puzzle. So he says, This goat, it would be mechaper, it would repent for all the sins of the Torah. The, the lighter ones and the more intense ones. What does that mean? We'll see in a second. So Ramam says, This Sayyir Mishalayach, this goat was super powerful. That it would repent for all of the errors in the Torah, the the intense ones, the less intense ones. If we did it on purpose, we did it accidental. And then he says, "Bein shehodalo." If we whether if the person knew it, bein shehodalo, and even if the person wasn't aware of his sin, hakol miskaper b'sayir mishdaleach. This sayir mishdaleach, this goat that we would throw off, it was basically it's like a cheat code. Um, it 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 got rid of all your errors. But then the Ram qualifies that. He says, yeah, but that's only if the guy also does tshuva. It sounds a little bit like he's contra- contradicting himself, right? That he says, even if he knew or if he didn't know, but then he said, also, he needs to do tshuva. So I tried to look, see if anyone says anything like on, on that. I didn't really find any, anyone that addresses it directly, but I think I think the general understanding is that you do need to do tshuva. Um, um, and still not so clear what he means when he says that whether he knew it or didn't know it um i guess you could also do chuva right i guess we'll see if you could do chuva for something if uh, you know i'm saying like i'm doing chuva for everything even if i didn't know about it does that work so we'll see what the, we'll see if what the ramam says Aval imlo chuva, perlo el but let's say you didn't do chuva at all so then this uh goat only atones for the the smaller layers. Mahina kalus mahina chamuros. So Saram says, let me define for you what's what's a more severe sin, what's a less severe sin. Chamuros hein shechayavin alei misas based in ukaris. The more intense ones are the ones that the more severe that you would be obligated death or ukaris. Yishvu eshav v'sheker or false swearing falsely or lying. Afa pishayim ben ukaris harei hen mina chamuros. These are the more severe sins. Ushar mitzvos. The other Mitzvos lo sasei u mitzvos sasei sheim ba'em karis which don't have karis hey makalos. Okay, so that's very nice. The Rambam told us that that this this uh sayer mishdaleach this go that they they used to throw off it atones for all your sins, but um it doesn't help us so much nowadays. Says the Rambam bizman hazeh nowadays sheim base amikdash kaim we don't have a base amikdash vein lanu mizbeach kapara and we don't have a a mizbeach of atonement. Ein sham ela tshuva. The only thing we can do is tshuva. A tshuva mechaperes akola veiros. Tshuva atones for all our sins. A filu rasha is very powerful. A filu rasha kol yamav. Someone who's wicked his entire life. V'as a tshuva b'achrona. Ein maskirin lo shum davar meirisho. So even if he's a he's a he's a wicked person and he does tshuva at his last moment of life, so he will not be reminded of any. I guess. When he, when uh, in the world to come, I guess you'll not be reminded of any of his wickedness because the pasuk says Risha Sarasha Loika Shaba Biyom Shuvah Merisha. So the wicked, the wickedness of the evil one will not cause him to stumble on the day he repents his wickedness. And he says also the essence of the day of Yom Kippur also um, atones for people who return um, because it says. On this day, um, that that you return, and then the Ramam has is a little bit of a confusing halacha. Um, but we'll see it, and then go to Parak Parak Bays. Parak Bays is um definitely want to get to that tonight. Um, it's very loaded. Alpha piece So there's one more halacha in Parak Aleph. Alpha piece shet chuba mecha peres alako v'atz moshal yom hakipur mecha per yesh aver shemis. So the Ram says, even though that tshuva really atones for everything, and also the day of Yom Kippur atones for stuff, 
So he says there are some Averos which are atoned for immediately and some um, take a while for, for the atonement to be fulfilled. So what does he mean by that? He says the Rambam, Ketzad, how does, how does this work? Avar Adam al mitzvah say, Shein bakaris, um, chuba. So let's say a person, he did a mitzvah that, mitzvah that say a positive mitzvah. He didn't do it. Let's say a positive mitzvah he was uh, supposed to uh, put on, he was supposed to shake the lulav. He didn't do it. Um, then he did chuba. So says Ramam, in Uzaz Misham Achim Lo. So if he did chuba, then he basically immediately is is uh he's forgiven. Shinesh the Pasak says, Shuvu Banim Shovim Mir Pa Mishbu Zichem. Avar Mitzvah Slosa say Shain Ban Karis. Below Misa space din Rasa Chuba. So let's say there is a mitzvah slosa say that it's not punishable by karis, not by death. Vyasa Chuba, and he does chuba. Chuva tola yom kipur mechaber. So if he does chuva, so the chuva is kind of the word he uses is tola, which means hanging. Um, so it says the chuva is kind of like hanging in the air. Yom kipur mechaber. Yom yom kipur is when the full atonement comes. The elu neemar ki yom azayich apar aleichem. Avar misos krisis. Avar krisis mis based in vasa chuva. Let's he did more severe vera. Right, that that requires that there's karis or meets a basin, they're killed by the basin, and he did chuva. So he says, Chuva yoma kipurim told him. So each chuva and the yoma kipurim hanging in the air, the yisurin and baalav gomrin lo kapar, and and uh, yisurin, which is like challenges that come to him, so they give him complete atonement. Well, the olam emis kapar lo kapar gemur achevo alav yisurin, but he doesn't get full atonement until these hardships come to him. Um, and he quotes a pasuk of Akadti b'shevet pesham u'v'negaim avunam, and then he says one more level. Pamed var memurim b'shelo chilas Hashem b'shal shavar b'shal shavar. This is only true if you didn't desecrate Hashem's name. Abal mechaz Hashem, but if you desecrated Hashem's name um, when you did this avira, afa b'shal satchuva, even though you did chuva, he gave yom kippurim and yom kippur came. Vuhu omi b'chuvaso, and he's. And he's completely repented. And he has these hard challenges. He doesn't have it fulfilled. He doesn't have complete atonement until um, he dies. So he says, So the tshuva and the Yom Kippur and the challenges, they're all hanging in the air. And the death is what gives him the full atonement. Um, okay, so the Rambam there is saying that there's basically different different levels of of what of of sins and different requirements of tshuva that are in place for that. Um, so that's that's chapter one, and now we're going to see chapter two. Chapter two is very very exciting. Um, so says the Rambam, So I see uh, I see my chavrusa, good friend Jeremy's on the call. He likes to quote this Rambam all the time. Um, so now we're learning it together. Ezohi chuva gemura. What is a complete chuva? Zesheba liyado davar shavar bo. Beefshar biyado la soso ufirish veloasa mipnei chuva. So says the Rambam. What is complete chuva? It's a person who confronts the same exact situation which he sinned, and efshar biyado la soso. He has in his ability to do the sin that he did beforehand. Upirish velo asa mipnei chuva, and he doesn't do it because he has repented. Lo miyira, not because of uh, he was afraid to do it. Velo mikishlon kawach, not because of a lack of strength. So the Rambam says, let me that might be hard to understand. So the Rambam says, I'll give you an example. Ketzad hare shabal ishabavira. So someone who committed sin with with a woman lachar zaman nisyached ima, and then comes time later and he's. Uh, secluded with her, who made Baba Soba, and he still has the same love for her. Uvekoach Gufo, he still has the strength, physical strength of a Medina Shavar in the same location. Uparash, and he separated himself. He was able to hold himself back. Velo Avar, and he didn't commit the sin. Zehu Bal Tshuva Gemura. That is what is called a complete Tshuva to be in the same place, same situation, and and to not and to not sin. This is what Shlomo says. And to remember your creator in the days of your youth. Um, so let's say you let's say you didn't do complete shuva. Let's say you're never in that situation again. 
um, or you delayed. So let's say you took until you got a little older to do tshuva. So if you if you only did tshuva later, even though that's not complete tshuva, but that's still you're still called about tshuva. Afilu aver kol yama v'asa tshuva biomisaso umeis b'tshuvaso kol avonos of nimchalim. And even if you wait your entire life and you only do tshuva on the day of your death. He dies in that tshuva, so all his sins are are forgiven. And that refers to the day of death. This implies that if you remember the Creator and you return before you died, you are forgiven. So what is tshuva, says the Ramam? Who sheyazov hachotecheto? This is that uh, the sinner he should he should abandon the sin and remove it from his heart. And you have to uh, you have to commit to your heart that you're not going to do it owed. So again, the Ram is defining chuva is very important. How do we define chuva? It's abandoning the sin um, to remove it from your heart and to basically decide that you don't want to do it owed. You don't want to do it again. And says the Ram, additionally, you have to regret the fact that what you did. And um, basically, Hashem is going to know that you, you're not going to return to this again. And one more thing. So, yeah, let's finish it and then we'll summarize. And says the Ram, the last step is that you have to actually verbally confess and 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 say these things um, that you resolve to do in your heart that, that you decided. So how do you do tshuva? So you have to um, commit to not doing the sin um, and remove it from your heart and then decide you're not going to do it again and also regret that what you did um and then and also one more thing is to verbally say, verbally say that um everything which which you thought in your heart call me so it says around them, though but let's say you just let's just say you you verbally say something but you don't mean it in your heart call me so let's say you you just say it but you didn't actually you, know, you didn't really mean it. You didn't really mean you're going to stop doing it. You just said, "I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop sinning." I read it. He compares it to someone who goes into the mikvah to make himself pure, and there's a uh, there's a bug in his hand. Um, that doesn't work until you get rid of the uh, the get rid of the bug. And so to the pasuk says. He who confesses and forsakes his sins. You need to do both. You need to both admit and also commit to leaving the sins. And you also need to specifically mention your sins. And this is what Moshe said, that that uh, that this nation sinned and they made the Egel Azav. So Moshe specified what was their sin. I remember, I remember in yeshiva, um, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to one of my friends and, and he, he asked me and he said, uh, you know, do you ever feel like on you, like we get to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and you're like, oh, like, you know, I don't really do all these, like, uh, these, these terrible things. Like, I don't really know what, like, what am I doing tshuva for, for, um, so I, you know, at that time I was like, yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying, but but I think what the Ramam is telling you, telling us here, is that, um, you know, it's very, it's very easy for, for, for us to go through like the whole tshuva process and say, okay, I am so, uh, you know, I sorry for everything I did. I'm doing tshuva. I want to be better. But real tshuva is when you take the time to think about, you know, and everyone has the things that they can think about, that in specific what what they did wrong and what they can work on to improve, and and that's his point that you have to specifically mention what what your sins were and that requires that requires time and effort to do it's not you know it's it's not it's not so easy but it is if 
we are obligated to, to do tshuva. And the Ramam is saying that that's part of the obligation. So the Ramam continues. Um, so he says, among the paths of doing tshuva is to, A, first thing, uh, so to call out to Hashem with crying, um, and give tzedakah according to what you're able to, and to also distance yourself from what from what caused you to sin, also to change your name. So what do you mean by that? Um, he says, uh, you basically like redefine yourself. I'm not the person who did these things. Change your behavior to the good, and to the path of the righteousness, and to also leave leave your place that where you sin. Maybe you need to change locations if your location is causing you to sin. Says that that galus to to leaving traveling away from your home actually atones for your sin because it causes the person to become humble um and low down um and now halacha hey so this is a very this is a very interesting halacha ramam says so he says it's very praiseworthy for a person who who's doing tshuva to to confess in public and make his sins known to everyone else and reveal the different sins the, the sins that he did with other people and he should say so he says even though I sinned against this guy and I did this terrible thing to my friend over here but I did tshuva so the Ram is saying is that if you did, if you did sins, um, you acted inappropriately with other people. So he says it's a it's a praiseworthy thing to publicize that and say, you know, I wasn't, I used to, I used to do this, I used to cause this guy a lot of pain, um, but now I did tshuva. So anyone who has he holds himself in his pride, um, and doesn't reveal his sins, he hides his sins. So he has not done complete tshuva. He says if you if you don't, if you're if you're hiding these public sins, if sorry, if you're if you're hiding these sins uh, that you do to other people, then you haven't done complete tshuva. So says the Rambam, he continues, he says this is only with sins. That a person does between him and a fellow and a fellow friend. But sins that a person does with Hashem, with us and Hashem, atmo. He doesn't need to publicize those. The Azus Panim Hilo Imgilam. And what's more is that that's actually um arrogant to do that. He should return for Hashem. Upori chata av lefanav, and uh, men and and specify his sins right just before Hashem. We spadei aleim lefnei rabim istam, but when you're in public, just do it in in a general confession. V'tova he shaloni skale av no shenemar ashrei nisoi pesha kisoi chata, because the pasuk says, "Happy is whose transgression who is forgiven." Praiseworthy is a person who's whose sin is forgiven and whose sin is covered. So the Ramam is a it has this very strange halacha. He says, on the one hand, your sins that you do with uh that you commit from you to another person, those you should publicize. But the sins that you do between you and Hashem, those you should keep, those you should keep quiet. And in fact, and he says, and what's more, it's actually arrogant to reveal them. So I had to look around see if anyone explained what that meant because you know what would be the difference why why would a why would one you should reveal and one you're actually arrogant if you do reveal so I at first I was thinking maybe just you know on my own logically is that people uh you know it's a 
it looks it looks it looks a little bit better you know it looks uh more prideful to say you know uh i'm really a good person but uh yeah i sinned between me and hashem and you know that makes it doesn't seem so bad but when 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 you when you say that uh you sin with other people and you cause other person pain so you know that that's uh you know people are less likely to do it so maybe that's why the realm i'm saying that um the cast of Mishnah, he explains, he has an approach. He says, Misover Abenu, the Rambam is understanding. He explains, So he says, a public, public sin that we've committed with Hashem, he says, it's not, not the same as the sin that we commit between us and another person. A sin that we commit between us and another person, mitzvah of our same. It's a it's a mitzvah to publicize them. Why? So this is the cast of Mishnah, he understands it as follows. The reason why you're publicizing the sins that you do with your friend is that so that maybe your friend will will uh will uh forgive you. Um it doesn't really sound like what the Rambam's saying. Rambam sounds like he's saying, like even to other people, regardless of if the guy forgives you or not. Um, but anyway, that's how the case of mission is understanding. But sins that you commit with you and Hashem directly, He says, granted that sins that you committed with with Hashem. If someone asks you directly, point blank, and says, did you do this? Did you do this sin? Right, and it's known that you did it. So you shouldn't lie and say, no, I didn't sin, right? You should answer, yeah, I sinned, but I've done tshuva about this severe that, that I did between me and Hashem. Mikol makom, says the case of Mishnah, eno mitzvah lefarsim. It's not, it's not a mitzvah to publicize it, though, if no one knows about it. Shu'ula yes sham adam shelo yadabadavar. Maybe there was a person who didn't know that you did a sin, and now he knows. And in fact, there's going to be a desecration of Hashem's name by, by him now knowing that you did this. Okay, so yeah. So that's that's how Kesha Mishnah explains. I was also, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to uh, my friend and also Rusa, um, here in Tinek, uh, Arye Berman, um, and, and he told me, it's a pretty crazy story, um, I showed him this Rambam. I said, "Do you have any comments?" So, so he said that I have no comments. I just have a, a little story. So he said that when he was in Wyu before before I was there, that one night after night seder, this uh, boy in Wyu he uh, he clapped on the on the bima after after night seder, um, and he starts getting up there and saying all this all the verse that he did. Uh, he said he did this thing which was inappropriate to this person and. <laughs> and it was just it's very strange uh, you know he, the whole base matters got silent because you know although the Rambam says it um you know i'm i've never seen anyone do it so the whole base matters got got pretty quiet um and rebbe you know rebbe just kind of took him aside and spoke to him directly so i but he the reason he did it was because he wanted to fulfill this Rambam here that says that you should publicize the affairs that you do between yourself and a and a fellow person um not sure not sure if that's a if that approach though is is necessarily the best one um okay but i, I did want to share that story okay so let's do uh, one more let's do one more uh halacha um and then something else afa pisha chuva veatsaka yafa leolam so says the ramam even though chuva and saka calling out tashem are good Always, it's always good things. But sar yamim shebein rosh hashanah v'yom kippurim hiyafe yoser. It's even better. Miskapelasi miyad shenemar dir shu hashem bhimatzel. But medvar mamurim biyachid. When is that true? When when a person is individual about the tzibor, but when you're in the tzibor in your community, calls mancha osim tshuva v'tzoakim believe shalim. Any time that you cry out to Hashem with a complete heart, him nanim they are answered shenemar. That that uh, just Hashem said, like whose nation is great as Hashem. Whenever we call call to Him, okay. Uh, let's let's stop there.
Um, does anyone have any any questions? 